So what we're going to do now is work a few problems to give you a, a little bit of practice with density, because it's really not that hard. First problem says, a 25 milliliter sample of liquid bromine has a mass of 78 grams. What is the density of bromine? So what we need to do is realize that the density is equal to mass divided by volume. This is one of those equations that you should just memorize, but hopefully after talking about it, you'll understand why it's equal to mass divided by volume. So in the problem, we know what the mass of this sample of bromine is. It's equal to 78 grams. So 78 grams, and we're dividing it by the volume. The volume was also given to us by 25 milliliters. Remember, this is uh, a unit of volume. It's one one thousandth of a liter. It's also equal, one milliliter is also equal to one cubic centimeter. Uh, but it just, just the way it, it happens to be written in the book could be written either way. So what we need to do is take our calculator, 78 divided by 25. When you do that, you're going to get 3.12. That's the number, but don't ever write just a number down for the answer to a problem. You need to have a unit. What are the units here? Grams per milliliter. Grams per milliliter. So what does this uh, mean? That means we've calculated the density of this sample of bromine that we have. We measured its mass, we measured its volume, we divide the two numbers, and we know now that the density of any sample of bromine is 3.12 grams per, cu per uh, milliliter, or the same thing per cubic centimeter. So what it means is if I take a drop of bromine, you know, measure out exactly one milliliter, then the mass of it should always be 3.12 grams. So if you're comparing two liquids or two chemicals or something, then knowing their densities can help. That's basically a physical property of that, of that substance. It's intrinsic to that substance because every time I measure out another milliliter of bromine, I'm going to get another 3.12 grams. That's what's going to be the mass of it is. Okay? So let's go on to a different type of problem, a uh, similar kind of concept, but it goes like this. Metal chips have a volume of 3.29 cubic centimeters, and they're placed on a piece of paper and they're uh, weighed. Uh, the combined mass of these two guys, when we take the mass of them, is 18.432 grams. If the paper has a mass of 1.214 grams, uh, what is the density of the metal chips? What is the density of the metal chips? So what we want to know is calculate the density of that metal. So what we need to do is write down what we know. The density of the metal is going to be the mass of that metal divided by the volume that that metal occupies. But the problem doesn't really give us that information exactly because we know the, the volume of the metal chips, we actually know, 3.29, so we know that. But we don't know the mass because we put it on a piece of paper and uh, we know that the combined mass of the paper plus the metal, so we have to do a little bit of work. What I suggest, if you're not sure what to do, is always draw a picture. A picture is so incredibly important in chemistry and physics and, and uh, almost all branch of math and science. If you can draw a picture to help you, then please do it. So here's a piece of paper, and here's some metal chips on top of the paper. Believe me, I'm not an artist. It doesn't have to be perfect. But what you do need to, to tell yourself is that the mass of these two things combined together is given to us in the problem 18.432. 4, 3, 2, and that's grams. And I'll put the grams in brackets just so you don't get confused. It's not a 9 or anything. It's 18.432 grams. That's the combined mass of all of it. So I drew a little bracket to show myself that. Now, in addition to this, we also know that the paper by itself weighs 1 or has a mass of 1.214 grams. So if we know the mass of the paper, and we know the mass of the combined thing, uh, then all we need to do is subtract these two numbers to figure out what the mass of the actual metal, I'm sorry, what the, uh, yeah, what the mass of the actual metal is sitting on top, which is the number we need to stick in here. Because we're not interested in the mass of the paper. We're trying to calculate the, ma the, the density of the metal chips. So we need the mass of the metal chips. We need the volume of the metal chips. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that we have the mass of the metal is equal to the combined mass of the paper and the metal, so 18.432 minus 1.214. Okay, so the mass is equal to, when you take 18.432 and subtract 
1.214, you'll get 17.218. And the unit is grams because we're subtracting grams minus grams, so the unit is grams. 17.218, and that's the mass of the metal chips that's sitting on top of the paper. So now we have everything we need. The density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. The mass we just calculated is 17.218, and that's grams. And the volume, right, the volume is the volume of the metal chip, and that was also given to us in the problem, 3.29 cubic centimeters, 3.29, and the unit is cubic centimeter. So now all we have to do is divide these two numbers. The density is equal to 17.218 divided by 3.29. We'll get 5.23, and the unit is grams per cubic centimeter. Grams per cubic centimeter. And I just like to, to usually keep things in brackets. It helps me not confuse the unit with the numbers. So that's what that means. This particular sample of metal, whatever it is, could be aluminum, could be gold, could be silver, whatever it is, Every time I take a cubic centimeter of that material, I should have a mass of 5.23 grams. If I have a truck full of the stuff and I shovel out one cubic centimeter, I should have a mass of 5.23 grams. Every time I do that, every time I take another cubic centimeter out, I should have the same mass because the density is something that is a, 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 a intrinsic property of the substance that applies to, to every part of the substance, no matter you know, if it's on this side of the truck or that side of the truck, it's a property of the metal. So every time I get the same amount of volume back, I should have that amount of mass. That's what the volume, that's what the density means. Okay, the next problem is a rectangular block of lead is 1.2 centimeters by 2.41 centimeters by 1.8 centimeters on each of its sides. If the block's mass is 59.01 grams, what is its density? Same exact concept. We know that the density of any substance is equal to that substance mass divided by its volume. So all we need to know is the mass and the volume. Now we know the mass, that's given to us by 59.01 grams. But the problem doesn't really give us the volume. So you have to find that some kind of way. You have to look in the problem and see what can you use to calculate the volume so happens that you know the dimensions of this cube. So we're able to calculate the volume. Uh, if you think about it, uh, the, the, cube, the, the, the block, I should say, is, you know, I'm not drawing it to scale or anything like that, but it's, it's a block. It says it's a block, a rectangular block. Uh, so what we know is on one side it's 2.41 centimeters. On another side it's 1.20 centimeters. And the only other side left would be this one. So this guy is, let's say, 2.41. Actually, we've already used that guy. The other guy is 1.80 centimeters. So we know the dimensions in length, width, and height. So how do you think we calculate the volume? We're just going to multiply them. That's how we calculate the volume. So the volume is going to be equal to 1.80 times 2.41 times 1.20. 1.20. So the volume, when you take these guys and multiply it, 1.8 times 2.41 times 1.2, you're going to get 5.21. But don't just leave it like that. You have to have a unit here somewhere. What should your units be? What you're doing is you're multiplying centimeters from, you know, everything is centimeters, centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So you're going to get centimeters cubed because you have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters, in other words. So the volume of this block is 5.21 cubic centimeters. If you can imagine what a cubic centimeter looks like, being one centimeter on each side, take 5.21 of those, that's the volume that we're talking about in this problem. So that volume is gonna go straight into here. And the mass was already given to us. So the density is going to equal, the um, mass is given to us by 59.01, and that was a unit of grams. The volume is what we just calculated, 5.21, and the unit here is cubic centimeters. So all we need to do now is divide these two numbers. 59.01 divided by 5.21 is equal to 11.3, and the unit is going to be what? Grams per cubic centimeter. 
because grams per cubic centimeter. So we divide the numbers, the unit stays here. So again, this means that if I take a cubic centimeter of this material and put it on top of a, uh, of a balance to, to measure its mass, I'm going to get 11.3 grams because I have 11.3 grams for every cubic centimeter of that material. So I've tried to emphasize that uh, very, very uh, clearly because a lot of students get confused with density. It's something that, um, you know, you, you have experience with it in your everyday life, but never to sort of like the mathematical definition like we have here. So I hope that I was able to break it down a little bit, give you a good solid foundation to what density is, because as we go forward talking about different substances and properties and materials, it's really a shame if you don't get chemistry because you don't understand the terminology. It's very important to understand the terminology. And here we've practiced a few problems to teach you what density is, how you might interact with it in your daily life, why it's important, and most of all, how to calculate the proper density when you're given different, uh, different sets of information. So these kinds of things will definitely help you on your exams and on your homework.